hey YouTube, thank you so much for putting up with me on my video last week where I was in the car um, teaching you guys about some pommel planter keratoderma punctate um, variation of that. So you guys got to see me work on the left foot and now you get to see me work on the right foot. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna kind of speed this up a little bit because it's um, relatively the same. But one thing I really wanted to show you guys is just how much um, corns there are on both feet. So the presentation that you can see on the left is very similar to the presentation on the right. Um, and hopefully we can get you guys some better angles so you can see just how much callus there is. Um, and the other thing is just to show you how we kind of fine tune it a little bit to take off as much pressure as we possibly can using the 15 blade, um, the Moore's disc and, and the Dremel just to, well, the, the Dremel bit just to make sure that we can get the corns out. So again, you'll see me working on the right foot here. Um, you can see just the, how much, you know, irritation this may cause the patient. Um, and you can see how many corns are present. So again, I, I would say there's about 50 on the left and 50 on the right. And then what I'm going to show you now is, is we're actually going to kind of jump to where I switched to the 15 blade um, it, just to do, hone in and do some fine kind of debridement and, and really reduce the corns in the, the area. So I switched to my 15 blade and what I'm doing then is, is working on the toes. So, so again, you can see that the, the callus or corns develop and doesn't have to be high pressure areas as long as there's some pressure. Um, and you'll see that I can kind of get in there and just debride that little bit of the corn more than you can with the, the 10 blade, which is a, is a much bigger blade. Um, the, the 15 blade can also be used for um, the digits just because again it is a smaller blade so you'll see here that i'm able to dig deeper into the corn and, and relieve that pressure um, and you'll see how much more tissue i can actually get off some of these corns so again what, what we're doing here is, is we're using the the belly of the blade um, by using the belly of the blade you can take off more tissue um, and you can see the belly of the blade on some of these corns almost matches up to the diameter um, of them so it, it allows me to take out kind of the, the inner core, so to speak. Um, but I, in a couple of them, you'll see I'll actually try and enucleate some of these corns. Um, and the enucleation technique is actually when I switch to a pencil grip approach. So um, I'll, I'll almost use the tip of the blade um, and, and go at it as a, in, at a 90 degree angle and, and really try and get in there and get the corn out. So what you'll see here is I've actually switched to a pencil grip approach and I'm going almost straight at the corn and this is called enucleation. So I'm kind of going in there and using the tip of the blade to really get the, the corn out. So I'll do this on some of the bigger corns. So you'll see there, I, I did it on that one. Um, you'll, you'll see I'm kind of smoothing out the ridges with this smaller blade. So you can see, I just kind of went over it with my thumb because I want to feel how rigid it is and how much, um, or feel the ridge around the callus as well. So I'm kind of going around and, and uh, making sure that this is extra smooth again for the patient. So when they're walking around, they're not getting so much pressure. So here you can see that I'm, I'm using the end of the burr to again, clean up some of those corns. And then what I'll do with the burr, and, and you have to be careful with, um, because the burr has been running for so long, that tip of the burr will get quite hot. So you'll see I'm, I'm kind of going to jump around here. And what I'm using with the burr is just to kind of really clean up those those calluses, the, the fine detail there to get rid of the, the last little bit of callusing there to give the patient as much relief as possible. So I'll kind of hold it there, quickly move, um, just to prevent the, the burr from heating up and, and, and giving that burning sensation to the patient. So once we're done using the burr, and you can see how deep some of these corns are when those when the burr actually goes in. Um, but once we're done using the burr, which is our finer detail, then I'll actually switch to the Moore's disc. Um, yeah, I think in this video you'll actually see with the Moore's disc that I completely split one. Um, that's what happens when you when you're doing quite a bit of work with them. They they will they rotate so fast that eventually the the paper will just blow right through, um, and then you have to switch to another one. Um, the other thing I don't think I mentioned in this video is is I've actually went through four blades. So um, I used uh, two 10 blades and two 15 blades. So the, the 10 blades, what can happen when you're using them and you're cutting or debriding a lot of tissue is they can start to become more dull. Um, dull makes it a lot harder to work, but it's also a, a little bit more dangerous when it's a dull blade because it catches a little bit more. Um, so I, I switched blades commonly throughout the treatment and that's just to make sure that I have um, 
a nice blade and it makes the work a lot easier. So here I'm, I'm switching to the Moore's disc. Um, so that's a, a bigger surface and you can see now I can really clean that up and, and it'll make that skin nice and smooth. Um, so again, I was mentioning of between the, the, the vacuum um, and the spray drills. So this is a vacuum drill. You can see that some of the, the dust is flying up and then getting sucked into the handpiece there. Um, some people will also use extractors in the room, um, like overhead to get more of the, the debris vacuumed up. Um, and then again, the other people use the spray, um, which sprays water or alcohol. Um, so you can see for, for how much we're using the um, file here, if we use the, the spray, quite a bit of fluid would be on the patient. Um, so again, some people are very good with it. I'm just not that good with it. Um, and personally do not like it. So here you can see how smooth all this skin is now with using the, the Moore's disc. And the other neat thing about using this is you can see just how many corns there actually are because the dust is um, is getting stuck into the, the cavities from the corn. So you can see it's just they're showing up as white because of the amount of skin dust that's in them. Um, and you can see just how many corns there actually are for the patient and, and why it's so uncomfortable. So another thing is, is you have to move fast. You don't want to burn the patient. So it's, with the vacuum is since it, it doesn't have the spray, it, it's not cooling down um, the temperature of the burr. So it's just a different approach. And there you can see the Moore's disc went flying off and, and the paper had separated. So I, I'm currently in the process of putting on a new one. Um, and then so when I put on the new one, we'll then jump to the right foot. So there, the less been completed, and then we're going to move our, over on to the right foot, and you'll see how much you can kind of clean up there. So you can see there how we you can it smooths right out, um, and the, the surface almost becomes like one. Um, so again, it's just how much better that would feel for the patient. There you can see how the, the patient jumped a little bit, and that was because the drill got a little warm. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, sometimes that does happen, and, and so it, in this case, it's, it's I was moving so fast that it wasn't it, it didn't hurt the patient too too much. But you can see it just caused a little bit of a reaction there. Um, so unfortunately, that is something that can happen when you are using the drill. Like anything with, with medical is is you know you're using instruments that are really trying to deprive tissue or or assist with the process. So there's always a risk of of some pain and. No pain, no gain. I'm just kidding, but you, you want to avoid to do that as much as you can. Um, but in, in reality, there it always happens. Well, not always happens, but it happens sometimes, and you want to try and avoid as much as you can. So I like to try and make my treatments as, as relaxing and, and painless for um, my patients as possible. Um, simply because if you know it might take more time but it, it just ends up with a better result but there's certain things that you have to cause pain to um, to, to get the successful result so for instance if, if you have an ingrown toenail and you need to freeze the toe unfortunately you do need to put a needle in but we try as hard as we can to make that as painless as possible so we'll use different techniques um, such as numbing the area with some topical cream or using um, spray to help to to freeze the tissue or, or cool the tissue so that it doesn't have less sensation. Um, so there's different techniques. So now you'll see, I'm, I'm just putting on some emollient cream. Um, again, you'll see that the cream actually goes in the holes so you can see how many corns there actually are. Um, and then it, you just see how much better that would feel for the patient. So this patient is, is one of my favorite patients. She, they're a great person. Um, and you can see they're, they're waving goodbye to everyone. Thanks. Bye.